Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. I wanted to show you some center of mass example problems, so today I'm going to be showing you how to do this problem right here. We're going to sketch the region bounded by the curves, and then find the exact coordinates of the centroid. So before we jump into that, I do just want to mention really quick the kind of difference between centroid versus center of mass. Uh, really in most contexts, they're going to be the exact same point. Really all that, com that difference comes down to is what you're actually describing. So a center of mass is usually used to describe some physical object that actually has a mass. The context that you'd usually see that is to find the center of mass of some thin plate, where that thin plate is described by some sort of functions or boundaries or something like that. And then a centroid is usually going to be in the context of finding the center, essentially like what would be the center of mass of some region as described on an xy plane. So the centroid is just a region, the center of mass is some actual physical object that has mass. But if that object that has some mass is of uniform density, like a thin plate with uniform density, the center of mass and the centroid are going to be the exact same point. So in most contexts you can kind of use those two terms interchangeably. So let's go ahead and jump into this problem. So like it says, the first thing that we want to do is to sketch the region bounded by these curves. Uh, and in fact, even if it didn't say that, I would recommend doing that anyways, because that's going to make it a lot easier to figure out what to do here. Um, so let's go ahead and start with that. So we'll start with our xy plane. And then what we're going to want to do is kind of rearrange this equation so that we have something that is like y equals something with x so that we actually know how to graph that. So we'll just kind of do that over here off the side real quick. We'll have 3x plus 2y equals 6. We'll subtract 3x from both sides. And then divide both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel there. We'll just get y equals 6 divided by 2 is 3 minus 3 halves x. So this is the function basically that we want to actually graph. So you can see this is going to be a linear function. We're going to have a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 3 halves. So our y-intercept is going to be 3. So we'll go up to 3. And then the slope is going to be negative 3 halves. So basically all that means is we're going to go down 3 units over 2 units to the right. So we'll go down 3 units and then over 2 units would put us right here. So we're going to have a linear function that goes through those two points. And then we're going to have the line y equals 0, which is just the x-axis, and then the line x equals 0, which is the y-axis. So basically you can see the region that we're going to be looking at right here is that little triangle right there. So once we have sketched out our region, what we want to do is go straight into the center of mass equation integrals, which are two of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. If you haven't already checked that out, there's a link down in the description where you can see that study guide. You can go download it right away. It's available for instant download. It's only a few bucks. It's very affordable. Um, so go click that link. You can start using that today. It should make studying and homework a lot easier for you. But let's go ahead and start with those equations and I'll show you how to use them. So we'll go ahead and start with this x bar. So x bar basically just represents the x coordinate of the centroid or the center of mass. And then y bar is the y coordinate of the center of mass or centroid. Uh, in both of these equations, you can see that we have this 1 over A out here, 1 over capital A. That capital A is just meant to be the area of the region whose uh, center of mass you're trying to find. So basically, we'll need to figure out the area of this region here. That'll be our capital A. And then you can see with our X bar, we just have the integral from A to B of X times F of X, where basically your little a and b are just the x values that mark the left and right edge of your area. So in this case, we're going to have 0 to 2. And then our f of x is the function that makes up this region, basically, where it's, you know, these formulas are basically based on the lower bound being the line y equals 0. So basically, this function here tells us, you know, our f of x which we already figured out was y equals 3 minus 3 halves x. And then we can see our y bar equation, again, has that 1 over a, integral from a to b, which is going to be the same bounds as our x bar equation. And then we're going to have 1 half times our function, f of x, all squared. And then we're going to be integrating with respect to x. So the kind of first thing you want to figure out when you're applying these this 
these equations is to figure out your area of your region. So in this case, we actually have a triangle. I have done a video where I show you how to find the area between two curves. Basically, we could apply that same method here where this is one of our curves and then y equals zero is our other curve. And if you want to check that out, you can just click up there. But in this case, since we have a triangle, it's actually going to be a little bit easier because we know the area of a triangle is always one half times the base times the height. Well, in this case, we know the height of our triangle is three units, right? We go up three units there, and then the base is two units wide. So basically, we can plug in two for the base, three for the height, and that would give us the area of this triangle, which is just going to be three. So basically, we'll just use three for big A in these equations. So we'll get x bar equals one over three times the integral from A to B, which like I said before, is just the left and right edge of our area. So zero and two. And then we're gonna have X, which is always gonna be X no matter what. And then our function F of X, which is this line here, which is three minus three halves X. And do be careful when you're doing this, make sure to put parentheses around your function F of X, because we do need this X to distribute to the entire function. So we'll want to do that, distribute our x, giving us 3x minus 3 over 2x squared. And I'm not going to show you how to integrate this, you know, all the kind of details, but you could do this yourself using the power rule. I would recommend you do that. But if you do evaluate this integral using the power rule and then evaluate it from 0 to 2 by plugging in 2 and then plugging in 0 and then taking the difference between those things, you're going to get one third times two, which is just gonna be two thirds. So that basically just tells us that the x coordinate of our centroid is two thirds. Then we'll wanna work through this equation to figure out the y coordinate of our centroid. So again, the area of this, this uh, region that we have here is three. So this big A is gonna be three. So we're gonna get y bar equals one third times the integral, again, from zero to two, the bounds of this integral are gonna be exactly the same as the bounds of the other integral we did. And then we're gonna get one half times our function f of x, which is three minus three halves x, all squared, and then dx. So we have this constant one half that we can pull out of our integral. So that'll give us one third times one half out front and then we're gonna have the integral from zero to two of three minus three halves x squared, all squared. So remember, when you have something like this, what you wanna do is treat that as three minus three halves x times three minus three halves x. So basically what we're gonna to have to do is foil this. So foiling that is gonna give us three times three is nine, three times negative three halves x is nine halves x, negative three halves x times three is another negative nine halves x. And then negative three halves x times negative three halves x is gonna be plus nine fourths x squared. So this is what we know this whole thing is gonna be. So if we just kind of throw that down here, we're gonna get nine minus negative nine halves x minus nine halves x is just gonna be nine x plus nine over four x squared with respect to x. And then again, we could integrate this just using the power rule and then evaluating that from zero to two is gonna give us one six times six. One six times six is just one. So basically that tells us that the x coordinate of our centroid is two thirds, the y coordinate of our centroid is one. So that basically just tells us the centroid of this region or the center of mass of you know a thin plate formed by this region would be two thirds one. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified of all my new videos. I'm sure together we'll be able to get you some good grades in calculus. And if you haven't checked out my study guide, click the link down below and go check that out. Thanks and see you next time.